Welcome to our special Halloween edition of the Jefferson Exchange. I'm Mike Green. Up first, Vanessa Finney talks with local booksellers in Ashland to get their recommendations on some of the best spooky novels. Welcome to The Creative Way on the Jefferson Exchange. I'm Vanessa Finney, and just in time for Halloween, today's theme is Spooky Reads. And a sub-theme might be how a cold autumn in the Pacific Northwest is prime reading weather. With that in mind, I visited Bloomsbury Books in downtown Ashland to ask for scary book recommendations from a few booksellers, Susan, Nick, Riley, and Cody. They talked about over a dozen titles between them, from a novel they say is like detective fiction but more demented, to a dark fiction indigenous anthology, to a cozy mystery that's about as scary as the creek in your rocking chair. Hi, my name is Susan Chapman and I'm one of the managers of Bloomsbury Books. And I just want to mention two cozy Halloween mysteries. One is called Haunted to Death by Frank Anthony Polito. Very cozy. And Chaos at the Lazy Bones Bookshop by Emmeline Duncan. So if you want something that is just a little bit scary, that's where I would go. You know, you can read this when you're sitting in your cozy rocking chair with a cup of tea. Um, I also want to mention a book that we just got in called Horror for Weenies, which is perfect, right for me. Everything you need to know about the films you're too scared to watch. So that would be my suggestion for anyone like me who doesn't like to watch scary movies. Okay, terrific. And for mystery fans, just a quick shout out. It's over now, but the Ashland Mystery Festival. How can people find out about that to plug in next year? Okay, that is in the middle of October. If you just go to Ashland Mystery Festival, it should show up for next year. Uh, It usually lasts about four days, and it's a lot of fun. This year we had about 500 people or more, so it was very popular. Hi, my name is Nick Anderson, and I'm here to talk about uh, maybe not so cozy books, but they are really infectious reads. Um, The first one that comes to mind is uh, Last Days by Brian Evanson. This is a great book if you're like into uh, detective fiction, but you want something a little bit more demented. So it's about a a detective named Mr. Klein who is depressed and he, because he has uh, recently lost one of his hands in his last uh, assignment. Um, And this attracts the attention of a group, a, a cult called the Brotherhood of Mutilation who believe that in order to get closer to God, you have to lose as many limbs as possible, as you can. And so he gets kidnapped by this cult, and what results is a bloody revenge story uh, through uh, this cult and a separate cult that comes in at the uh, second half of the book. It is a wonderful read, lots of great dark humor in there, um, compulsively like readable, like very good. It's very much in the same... Like, imagine if Raymond Chandler and Poe, like, wrote a book. This would be what it would be. And then the only other book that I could think of is called The Damned, or La Ba, in its original French. This is a weird book. Um, It follows a writer named Dertal in the 1880s. Uh, and this, that's when the book came out uh, during the 1880s, uh, what we call the fin de siècle, which was the end of the century um, during the decadence period of literature. And he is writing a biography on the Gilde Ra, who was, is one of history's most notorious serial killers. He was also the friend of the Joan of Arc. And while he's writing this uh, monstrous biography on the Gilde Ra, he gets a trap, he receives notification of a, a Madame Chanteleuve, who is a fan of his work, of his prior books, and wishes to basically start an affair with him and lead him down into the uh, dungeons of uh, Paris at the time, where a lot of people are really interested in the occult. And what results is a very pessimistic, funny pessimistic book, and look at the industrialization of uh, France. It also has plenty of medieval history around France during that time. So it's a great, great book. Very weird book. Highly recommended, though. Terrific. The, and, those both sound very literary yes, and yes. bound to appeal to mystery lovers and history lovers. Yes, absolutely. And they're just 
really demented books. I, I, I love that sort of stuff. I also do want to mention that uh, one of our uh, co-workers, and he is a local author, um, has his own scary books out uh, called The Family Condition and uh, The Aching Plane. Both of these books are what we would call like horror love stories almost. Um, they are wonderful and you should absolutely check them out. Hi, I'm Riley Oaken. I work at Bloomsbury Books. And um, the first book I want to talk about today is The Bog Wife by Kay Cronister. It's uh, new in hardcover, just came in. And it's an ecological, dark fantasy, occult family drama. Uh, it's set in a remote area of West Virginia on a cranberry bog. Uh, it's unique and haunting and one of my favorite new books out in hardcover right now and it's great if you like Southern Gothics. The other book I wanted to talk about was Smother Moss by Elisa Allering. It's a Southern Appalachian Gothic meets coming of age novel, meets crime novel, murder mystery, meets dark fantasy. So it's a lot of things. <laughs> but it's really beautifully atmospheric, magical story of two sisters and their connection to their home in the mountainous Appalachian wilderness. That home is endangered by how do I say this without spoiling? <laughs> Certain unforeseen threats, mm -hmm. including a murderer on the loose. And uh, it's truly a delight. It uh, explores the bonds that hold us to each other, to ourselves, uh, and to the land we live on. Um, let's see. Another one, if we have time, is Never Whistle at Night. It's a dark fantasy, uh, dark fiction, indigenous anthology. It's 26 different authors, all indigenous writers. It's really amazing. And there's a lot of new writers. It's some of them, it's their first book they've ever written. Um, and others, there's some favorites in there, like Tommy Orange. He has a story in there, too. Uh, but it's great if you like folklore, uh, dark fantasy. Yeah, it's a real treat. And there's something for everybody to love in there, because there's so many different stories of so many different kinds. A reminder, you're listening to the Spooky Reads edition of The Creative Way. I'm Vanessa Finney. After talking with Susan, Nick, and Riley at Bloomsbury Books, I went back the next day to talk with a coworker they mentioned who'd written his own scary books. All right, my name's Cody Lakin. I'm going to recommend a couple horror novels. The first one is called Indian Burial Ground by Nick Medina. Uh, it's still in hardcover. Um, Nick Medina is a uh, member of the Tunica Biloxi tribe of Louisiana. Uh, he's from Chicago. Uh, Indian Burial Ground, it's a... Um, Kind of like a mythological horror. It's it's a thriller. It has horror elements in it. It's not too scary, uh, but it's it also has one of the more unique takes on the vampire genre that I've ever come across. Uh, and he writes beautiful characters um, set in a fictional reservation. Um, and he has two novels out. His previous one, Sisters of a Lost Nation, uh, same reservation. It's really neat. And what makes it a unique take? Uh, I think the vampire genre can tend to follow the same tropes almost too much every time. That's almost like the, the Dracula structure. Uh, so many authors are kind of a, overly attached to it. This one felt like it reinterpreted vampires within the mythology um, and the world of the story in a way that was refreshing to me. Oh. Um, yeah. I have another one, and I think I'm saying this correctly. It's called Ling Hun, um, L-I-N-G-H-U-N, by A.I. Jiang. This one's like a, a haunted house story kind of turned on its head like a subversion of the ghost story trope where it's not uh, the ghosts haunting the living, it's the living unable to let go of their, their lost loved ones who are haunting the dead. It's a very beautifully written story, and more of a novella than a full novel, um, but there's so much to unpack in it and a lot to feel. It's a book you read with your whole heart, mm. um, as well as it's melancholy but also very haunting. Uh, there's a classic one here, Ghost Story by Peter Straub. Some people might know Straub because he co-wrote a book with Stephen King back in the, I think it was the late 80s, called The Talisman. Um, and he's won several awards, like the Stoker Con. Um, a very literary horror writer. He used to be known as like an outsider in the mainstream. Um, just because he wrote unusual stories, uh, not so much like Stephen King. They're not, not as easily digestible. But if you give your attention to them and are willing to kind of dive into the layers. They're very rewarding. One of my favorite writers, Peter Straub. StokerCon, it's run by the HWA, which is the Horror Writers Association. They host the, uh, the StokerCon convention named after Bram Stoker, author of Dracula. 
it's the, as far as I know, the largest literary horror convention, um, and they, they move around every year. Last year was San Diego, and this next year will be uh, Chicago. Um, yeah, and Peter Straub was a uh, frequent member um, or attendee of StokerCon, and he won, I don't know how many of their, of the Bram Stoker Awards, but I know at least one or two. Um, uh, another one is Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez, uh, one of my favorite writers and one of my favorite books. Uh, Enriquez, she's from Argentina. This is the first of her novel of her novels to be translated. She has three short story collections. Also, each one is brilliant. This one is the first novel. It's uh, they go over six hundred pages, so it's quite a read. Um, but as beautiful as it is, just vicious and incredibly disturbing. <laughs> What's the basic premise? It's like a uh, a father and son on the they're kind of on the run from their own family who is, they are, the family is a cult, um, a supernatural cult, uh, and also like super rich, so they're very powerful. Um, and this is, part of the story takes place right after the brutal years of Argentina's military dictatorship. Mm-hmm. So you get the aftermath of that, the country in like chaos and turmoil, um, and also this very complicated bond between a father and son, and what inheritance means and the good and the bad in this case a lot of both a lot of darkness hence the title our share of night which i think is a quote from emily dickinson um it is a yeah the way i like to put it it is like it is a viciously disturbing but also wildly beautiful book Um, and i believe it was named yeah one of the new york times notable books of the year when it came out excellent and the last book i have here is called the fisherman by john langan uh, one of my favorite books in any genre. Uh, John, this book also won John Langwin a, a Bram Stoker Award uh, in, I think it was 2016. This one is more of a literary cosmic horror novel um, in the Lovecraftian tradition. Uh, so it's a lot of fun, but it's also a story of like grief and longing and what you would go, what lengths you would go to to try and see your loved ones again, the people you've lost. Uh, very human and then also very otherworldly at the same time. And Langan writes beautifully, um, a very literary horror writer, who, uh, whether it's his collections or this novel, um, one of my favorites. And here at, in the kids section at Bloomsbury, we have a lot of kids appropriate or all ages uh, books selected, including a, a couple displays, um, and cl- stuff like from Ray Bradbury. There's a funny looking edition of Dracula over here. A lot of picture books, um, like, like almost like cozy, spooky. Um, stuff you can decorate for Halloween, like press out and decorate Halloween books, stickers, little ghosts, things that go bump in the day, <laughs> and horror stories. The black girl survives in this one. Oh, yeah, I heard about this one. Is that more of a young adult? I think, that, yeah, this is a young adult book called The Black Girl Survives in This One. It's a collection of short stories from a bunch of different authors with a foreword written by Tanana Reeve Dew, who is a legendary writer um, in the genre. That is awesome. Yeah. Horror encapsulates a lot of different genres. It's like almost an umbrella term. There's weird fiction. Uh, horror would fall under weird fiction, speculative fiction. Um, but the way I've heard it put is that horror has always been at the forefront of like pushing the envelope of, of genre in general. So uh, whether it's like literary horror, which is my favorite, there's thriller, crime horror, um, there's Lovecraftian or cosmic horror, um, of course, haunted house stuff or, or ghost stories. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a it, for years it's been looked down upon. Like horror is kind of, I've heard it called the trash bin of, of genre. Uh, same with like romance, where people c- can look down on them. Mm. But when you look at more closely, especially now that they're getting more readers and more a wider variety of writers, uh, more like diverse voices that we're getting in the genre, um, you really can see the literary merit. You've been listening to The Creative Way on the Jefferson Exchange. I'm Vanessa Finney, and you can learn more about these spooky reads on the staff picks page at bloomsburyashland.com. Or go down to the bookstore in person in downtown Ashland for all the ambiance and the smell of pumpkin latte drifting down from the cafe upstairs. You can follow The Creative Way at jeffexchange.org and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform.